What's up YouTube, Nate Chair from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles, back again with another tutorial for you guys. Uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, Cytron's baselines, we're going to be doing uh, a baseline in Serum. And now I know there's been a ton of tutorials doing this and it's not exactly the most complex sound to create, but getting them 100% right does involve quite a bit of little tweaks and things. Um, so I'm going to focus more just like on a few extra things that you can do to just really... Uh, fine-tune those sounds and just a couple of handy little tips when you're building your own Cytron's bass sounds. Um, so we've also just released a new pack, the Psychedelic Toolbox Volume 2, and we'll look at like some of the things that I've done with the bass sounds in that pack as well. Uh, let's dive in and we'll check it out and see what we can come up with. Okay, so we're going to be doing uh, something, we're going to end up with something like this. Um, I've just got a kick drum loaded in from the side toolbox, volume 2. And we're going to just uh, use Serum to program our bass sound here. <clears throat> so let's, uh, we'll come back to the processing in a second. Let's take a look, we're going to initialize this patch first. And take a look at a few little tips and tricks on building these bass sounds. So the first things first, <clears throat> we've got our standard um, default saw, uh, saw wave uh, when you initialize a preset in Serum. This works fine for the most part, but um, I want to just show you how you can add a little bit more flavor to your saw waves as well. Um, you'll find uh, I did some custom uh, wave tables for Psychedelic Toolbox Volume 2. Um, so this is a Nord lead. Uh, it's a blend between Nord and a Square. I don't necessarily want the Square, and I might not want... It's actually not too bad, but it's a little bit buzzy in places. Um, so I wanted to just show you how to create sort of like a blend between the generic saw and this one. Um, so we can go into our Wavetable Editor, and we'll see our... our uh, uh, Nord wave, the sword that we have, saw that we have there, that is the square wave, and we'll see this is frame number 256. That means so there's a blend between them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, overwrite the square uh, that we have here, and we're just going to copy the saw that we have, but just without any of the additional harmonics in it. Um, we'll just grab this little saw uh, or diagonal tool and we'll draw in our saw wave. So now we have the generic saw that we had before. And we're just going to do a simple blend between them now so that we can kind of dial in how much of the extra harmonics that we want on our saw wave. Uh, we're going to go to Morph Spectral Zero Fun Phase. Click that one. And you'll see now we have a morph table from 1 to 256. If we close this down again now, uh, there's our original Nord saw wave that we had. And as we dial this in, you'll see it just morphs back to the generic saw that we had. So in this case, it's quite subtle, but you can just uh, modify your waves slightly by kind of just morphing between the two. Uh, you can even use other sources that aren't necessarily a saw wave um, and just kind of morph between that and a generic saw, uh, just to give you a little bit more crunch to the, the, the wave. Um, so let's get uh, get into actually putting this bass sound together. We're going to drop the octave down to two. And now we're going to have to set up a filter and our envelope. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to show you here is... Uh, usually uh, the note length is really important when you're going to start doing these sort of machine gun basses. Um, so as you can see what we have now. Uh, we're going to just keep the multiband uh, sidechain on. So in the past what I would normally do is actually shorten these notes down a little bit and leave just a touch of release on the amp envelope just to kind of so that they're not running into each other but also not giving you clicks and stuff like that um, in this case i'm going to leave them like this and I'll show you another way to set up the envelopes instead of using the amp envelope uh, that's hardwired to the amplitude uh, envelope one and envelope two for the cutoff we're going to use lfos um, so uh, serums lfos can be used as 
actual envelopes as well. And because we're doing this kind of machine gun galloping bass sound, um, we're going to be working in 16th notes. So let's just stick this onto 16th, the rate, and turn the volume down for your uh, oscillator. Actually, in fact, we'll do it for that one too, because we'll come back to that one in a sec. <clears throat> now, you have a really precise... Oh, I need to switch this to envelope mode as well. So envelope, this will trigger with each note. It'll trigger the LFO once, and that'll be it. So you've got a really precise um, feel to work in now. This is going to be one sixteenth note. So you know that you want your bass line. You don't want it running over into the next one. We can put that down to zero there. And we can draw in the amp envelope that we want to make sure that we're getting a really tight bass sound. Let's take a listen now. Oh, and we need to assign this to the uh, level. You see, you have really precise control over how long this bass is. What we can do as well is we can even add a little bit of a... Uh, let's bring this out to here. And we can add a little bit of a dip here. And this will kind of give us the effect that a transient shaper would have on the attack of it as well. And the other important thing, obviously, with doing a Cytron's bass line is you want to set your phase to start uh, in the same place. So turn your phase to zero and then take the random all the way down. We should hear the envelopes kicking in nice and tightly now. That's better. So we're going to do the same with the filter and envelope as well. We'll leave this on a 12, uh, 12 dB low pass filter. Envelope mode once again, and we're going to stick this onto 16th notes. Assign your LFO to the cutoff, and we can use Shift Alt to set that to unipolar mode. And let's be around there somewhere. Just want to hit the top of that. And once again, we can dial in. Nice, tight little modulation for the click. Here we go. And it's just nice because it conforms. You know that that's going to be conforming to the 16th notes every single time it hits. All right, so we've got a basic sound going on there. We can tweak this a little bit um, as we go, but let's take a look at a few other things. So I've spoken about uh, in the past with some other tutorials um, about EQing your bass line and uh, selecting specific frequencies uh, like you can with Pro-Q3, for example. Um, you can go and boost a specific note that you're on. And this works really well for the most part, finding specific harmonics uh, and then boosting those. Let's take a look. You can see there that'll be... We are in G indeed, uh, so you can boost that G just around that spot to kind of bring that uh, bass harmonic out. Um, the problem with that though is sometimes when you are shifting keys in a track, uh, if you're going to be going up from a G to say a B flat or a C or whatever, that harmonic that you're boosting is going to shift as well. Um, so a good way to kind of just add a, a sort of low harmonic to uh, your sound to get a little bit more bass out of it it's just to go and add in a um, a sine wave underneath, and we can use that instead to rather increase the low end of our uh, saw wave. Uh, you're going to want to set this to phase again and random all the way down. I'm going to bring that down to the same octave. And you're going to want to also just now set up the envelopes the same way that we had done before. We're going to put the amp envelope onto that. We're not going to bother with the filter for that. Okay, so the amp envelope is now controlling the sub as well. Now, that's quite a lot, but what I like to do is set up some macros so that I can fine-tune this easily once I'm writing the track. So let's go to the matrix page and the uh, B volume, which is the sine wave volume there, we have LFO1. 
I don't have to come in here every single time to set the amount and you can't set the level now because the LFO is actually automating that level so you can't really fiddle with that one too much. So we're going to use a macro as a side chain um, to basically control how much of the sub gets sent uh, uh, or how much of the modulation affects the sub. Uh, so the aux sources here we can use a macro one. We'll dial in sub AMT. So that'll be our sub amount. And you'll see now it's zero. It's just saw now. As we dial this one up, you have the sub increasing. So you can really quickly and easily in your track uh, go and adjust how much of that extra bass you need in this in the sound. So sticking with this, we're going to do the same thing now with um, adding a bit of a click as well. So if you want to add an additional kick to this, um, what we can do actually is just to continue with this theme of setting up macros. We'll set up a macro here as well for the filter cutoff amount. Uh, we'll just select macro 2. We'll say FLT, AMT, and that's going to be how much of the envelope is uh, triggered on the filter. And then lastly, we're going to set up the click one now. So let's do... A noise oscillator, we're going to click that one in. And uh, we'll dial this up just so we can listen to what's going on. We want to set this to one shot. And then we're going to go to the attack kick section and take a listen to some of these. That one I quite like, actually. And <clears throat> I'm going to keep that really short. So I'm going to set up another um, LFO. Uh, envelope and we'll set that one to the level and we'll make this really tight we're going to set that to 16th notes as well uh, but really short little attack that's all we're getting and likewise in our matrix editor we're going to select macro 3 We'll set this one to, sorry, not macro three. This one is going to be LFO three. We want macro three on that one there. So we can remove. And we'll call that one uh, click. There we go. So now we've got a side chain on that one to set up how much of the click gets sent. Uh, or how much gets modulated, the amp gets modulated via this envelope here. So there we have nothing. Let's dial this up. There we have our click coming in, sub coming in, and the amount of filter that we have as well. Yeah, there we go. So that's a good start. Um, so lastly, uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to take a quick look at the processing. So and some guys process inside of uh, Serum as well. I've seen people using the compressor. I'm not a big fan of the compressor. The, uh, I mean, the multiband thing, I prefer to actually use OTT outside of this if I'm going to use it. But for the most part, I find it a little bit... Uh, I'm not crazy about the sound on this kind of thing. Um, so there's a couple of plugins I just wanted to quickly take a look at uh, for my sub bass that we have here. We'll jump back into this one here. So we have BX control. Um, this one is just in there just to make sure that everything is sitting in mono. Um, there's no other real reason for it. Uh, just you want to keep a si the sub side bass kind of centered. Unless you're adding some stereo processing to the top, in which case you can just use the mono maker on that. Um, then we have the... Subfilter. Now this is a free plugin from Brainworks. Uh, if you sign up to their mailing list, you can get hold of a copy of this. What this does is it's essentially a high pass filter um, that is specially designed to get rid of problem frequencies in the low end. Uh, now I'll set this up from. We'll just uh, let's just do a fresh one over there. Uh, with this low end as it is, it tends to add a ton of bass to it. Julia, as you sweep up, it's essentially just a filter. So what I like to do is actually turn the low end down first and then use this tight punch dial. And 
until you find a spot where it kind of sits nicely. Uh, you could go and take a look at the, uh, let's just do G1 or G0. So if around 49 hertz, that's kind of close to where we are anyways, yeah, for the G to kind of pop out as well. We'll do 49, let's see what happens. And then we can introduce a little bit of low end back end again. Not too much, just to kind of just make up a little bit. Um, but it just kind of tends to remove a lot of these problem frequencies. Um, and it is kind of like a high pass, but I feel this one's doing something more than just high passing it blatantly. Um, it's kind of adding something to it. So there's some other curves going on there. Um, most likely something like what you have in Clean Sweep Pro. Um, if you take a look at some of these other filter types, you've got <clears throat> uh, this, uh, I believe it's the Chebyshev. So you can see there, it's a bit more, a slightly more interesting curve going on there. And it's uh, it's like a sort of resonant frequency there that when you hit it over specific uh, parts of the bass line, it kind of tends to tighten everything up a little bit. So yeah, definitely check this one out. It's a great little plugin. Just be careful with it because it can you can overdo it. Um, I'd recommend you just to put it down on low as well, just to kind of... Just a hint of what it's doing there. The next one is adding just a little bit of um, extra harmonics to your sound, specifically upper harmonics. Uh, so this is Black Box HD2. It's also Brainworks. Uh, this you can get on their subscription or you, you can just buy the plugin outright. Um, and it basically, it's just driving the sound a little bit. Um, I'm actually just using the uh, uneven harmonics here just because they sound a little bit more brittle and harsh, um, higher up in the sound. And it'll be a subtle difference, but we'll take a listen. So you can hear it's just adding a little bit more, a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, just making the sound a little bit more solid up in the sort of mid range area. You could work with the pentode as well and add in some even harmonics, but I find um, this one I quite like to do a little bit of the uneven stuff just to kind of make the sound a little bit more upfront. I'm not even bothering with the satur saturation at all on this. Um, so then, uh, multiband processing. Now, a big thing with the Cytrons um, bass lines, I find you need to get some sort of separation in your sound via a multiband processor. Uh, in the old days, all of us used to use the original Quadrifuzz. You can use the new one. Um, it's not quite the same thing, but you can get a decent sound out of this as well. And I'm not actually driving anything yet at all. Um, there's no actual, we're not pushing the distortion or anything on any of these. It's just the sound of the tape dry as it is. Um, but more specifically, I've played around with the crossovers and you, you'll, you'll kind of have to do this by ear, but um, where these crossover points are, it kind of creates little resonance dips. Uh, and that really kind of helps just give you a bit of separation in the sound and, and kind of make the bass sit where it needs to. Uh, we can take a listen quickly. That's without. And you'll, yeah, just kind of immediately just there's some frequencies in the sort of low, lower areas that just kind of get tighter when you put this on. Uh, so you'll need to kind of just play around. you find some for you now another one uh um i don't add so much compression these days with this i don't more limiting and stuff because they're actually firing so quickly as well it's hard for a compressor to sometimes keep up with uh with the transients on these bass sounds one way that i like to add just a little bit of extra bite into the bass line is by limiting and i'm actually using this free plugin as well um to clip it instead of using a conventional limiter um now I'm not doing a lot, it's just the just the peaks on the click, um, we're essentially just clipping them off, uh, which essentially creates a little bit of distortion, but it does tend to bite through uh, a little bit harder once you're doing that. Just be careful how much you clip though, because you'll see as soon as you start getting to the meat of that bass line, you'll end up with this. And that's, that's not a pleasing distortion at all, clipping is not great unless you're doing it just on short clip uh, short little transients like that it kind of just adds a nice bite to the whole thing 
And then lastly, there was just an EQ that I'd inserted on this. Um, it started off with being a little bit more uh, detailed, but just a basic low cut, it's the 24 dB slope, slope around 30 hertz, just to kind of get rid of some of the really low stuff. And um, I usually have a sort of filter set up like this that I can sweep through. that's pretty good there we go so that's basically that's kind of my baseline at the moment um then the macros as well we've done quite a lot of those macros with a lot of the bass sounds and psychedelic toolbox as well so go check that out um but yeah that's sort of my latest up-to-date um Cytron's baseline with serum hope you guys enjoyed the video i will catch you guys again soon right here on the marula music channel uh ciao Thanks for tuning in guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, if you did don't forget to smash the like button, hit that subscribe button and give the little bell icon a tap as well, so you guys get notifications when we have new content out, I shall catch you guys soon, cheers.